Right, hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I have something a little bit different for you today, something I haven't done before. Um, I've been dropped down a DPF to clean for a trade customer. He's removed it from a Ford Transit, so I'm gonna get it in the back of my, well, one of my vans, this one over here, and um, we're gonna clean it out. So I've got this other van specifically for doing off-car DPF cleans. So it's a new van that I've just set up. When I say new van, it's an old van, but it's new to me, basically. So, right, we've got a new a new machine that I've equipped up in this van, sitting here behind, beside me. So we've got that set up here, and we've got our DPF here that we're gonna get hooked onto this machine. We'll talk about the machine, and we'll talk about obviously the new service that I'll be I'll be offering trade customers or private customers. If anyone wants to remove their DPF, bring it to me without the vehicle. We can flush it, give it back to you, and have it fitted or remove and fit them ourselves. Depending on the, on the car now, there is some cars that I can't remove the DPF from on the side of the road, which are Vivaros and some other stuff. Um, but Ford Transits, we can remove the DPF on the roadside here and flush them. This one is actually from a Ford Transit, and we're gonna flush it out and I'll just show you the machine and how it works. Okay, so the first things I'm doing on this, I've just I've put a, a, what do we call a latex glove here, um, just sellotape that on just to seal off one end. And put some bolts that were supplied with the machine here in through these sensor holes now you don't have to remove these sensors you can leave them in we can clean them with the sensors on but this one has their sensors removed so we're going to block up these holes with a couple of bolts okay so this is the fluid that this machine comes with uh, let's see it's for the dcs 16 there comes with two bottles stage one stage two and if we read that we will have a look let's have a look Remove the DPF, fill it with the power cleaner, about half a litre, and then top up with water. Leave it stand for 30 minutes. Okay, so this should do three, three DPFs, basically, this bottle. And then we can start the cleaning process after that. Okay, we're going to get half a litre of that in there. So now we're just filling it with water. Just until the actual filter is completely <coughs> saturated there. We've got the bolts in it. Okay, so now we've emptied the fluid from the DPF. We've got it hooked up to the machine here. We're gonna strap it down. So you're gonna put the entry of the DPF facing outwards because we're gonna flush it back to front. So normally when it's on the car, the exhaust gases would be coming in this direction. So we're going to flush it backwards to get out any of the ash that would be built up in it. Okay, now we're going to use this insert, put that in there, and what we do is we tighten that down. And then we'll, I need my two hands for this, but once we tighten that down it will swell out the rubber here. And that will make it, make a tight seal here. So I just thought I'd get this out to show you what this does is it swirls the air and water basically in through, in through the DPF. And when you clamp this down it swells out this to make a seal here at the tip okay so I've turned on the compressor okay now we're just gonna let the pressure build up on that I've got a compressor hooked onto it this is basically show, trying to show you how around how it works so we've got a compressor here hooked up that runs off the inverter in the van and that is connected here to the machine it's got its own tank as well in there that needs to fill up now on here you can adjust how often it's going to push push pressure through, so every 10 seconds, 20, 30 seconds, you can choose that on there. We've got the connection from the machine going in here, that's connected on there with a the clamp, this is your water inlet from that, and then obviously this pushes the water and air through at the same time. We'll open the valve for the water to flow through, and then we push our automatic timer on there, and we should get a burst of fluid go through in a minute. I'm a little bit new to this machine now. I don't know if we need to wait for the 30 seconds for that to come on. Last time I used it, I just used a manual switch, but there we go. Try it on the automatic. Okay, so it's done about three bursts so far. We should have another one coming up any second.
Now we did have this soaking for a fair while beforehand. Most of the soot has already come out. You can see there now we've just run out of our water. About 10 litres of water gone through. I'd say she's certainly clean by now. Clean water coming out. So this model is a DCS 16 DPF cleaning machine. I'll put the link in where you can get this from in the video description. When I went to get this, they had a, a better version basically, and it wasn't a really big price difference. It had a, a heater function for drying out the DPF after, and it also had a, a printer that you could print out the before and after pressure. Um, the only reason I didn't go for that one was because I was concerned about running it in the van. So. It's going to be taking sort of three or four thousand watts to run that one where this one probably takes 500 to a thousand watts um so running this in the van was going to be a lot more simple for me um maybe i would have liked to try out the other version to see would it work in the van i'm not sure i just i was a bit concerned about buying it if it didn't it wasn't able i wasn't able to run it in the van like this because it's okay if you're going to use it in a, in a mobile unit yeah, so obviously that's my that was my main concern with this one is getting it to run mobile in the van um i don't currently have a a, a workshop unit uh, that i work from mainly because i could have got one recently but there was a lot of concern for me around how am i going to clean dps inside a unit that's creating a lot of smoke and if i bring it outside there was units opposite facing um i'd probably get complaints from them about the smoke entering their garages from that so I'm a little bit stuck on that in that in that scenario. It's okay if I'm using it in a machine like this. You could use that in a garage, but if, from if I'm doing on car cleaning and it's creating smoke, I think I would get a lot of complaints from the neighbouring mechanics or units, whoever is is nearby. Okay, we're going to release the strap. Let's just hold it in place, and we'll release the air valve from there. Tuck that back down the side. Got that set up really. Let's try and have a look down in there. And this is the other side. So you can actually increase the pressure on it by here. You can see there now the pressure is going up. Should have probably had that up around the max there really. What else have we got? We have an on and off switch here. Here's your model number. And you can see there it says, uh, does it tell you how many watts it's taken? 15 litres air receiver tank, chemical water and air. 60 kilograms the unit is, that's important I suppose. And there's your dimensions of it. I'll have a little look around the unit, that is it. Now of course, like I said, we will be offering off car cleaning for certain makes and models roadside but if we can't remove them roadside you're welcome to have someone remove it bring it to us and we can clean it on the bench here and then have it refitted this is the second stage of the fluid that comes with it pro clean treatment following a dpf power clean ensure the dpf is dry before the application slowly pour the dpf protect fluid into the dpf exhaust inlet rotate the dpf to make sure its coverage protecting fluid will be absorbed by the DPF so that just protects the coating of the DPF so that it is working correctly and you are getting the correct um, it's doing its job basically on on the emissions side of it so just trying to get the angle right there provides a coating of fresh active catalyst which will help oxidize the new soot Help oxidize new soot so protecting the DPF against future blockage problems. Now the main reason for using one of these machines, like I said, 90% of the time I don't need to do this. It's only if you get a car with very high mileage or certain models are, that are prone to ash build up very quickly. Now vehicles that do have ash build up would be Vivaros after 120,000 miles. Uh, what else? I'm trying to think which which other models I usually see that have ash ash problems really. Most DPF issues are related around soot. 
and the sud is only building up because the vehicle is not running correctly so you usually fix the fault and then the DPF will run right like I say in all my videos um, Vivaro's 1.6 a day I do have problems with ash after about 120,000 miles but like I've shown before four transits Peugeot boxers they don't have issues I've, I've done DPF cleansing them with 300,000 miles on them and they're absolutely fine um, you get the soot loading down it's fine there just are certain models that would require uh, a removal of the D a DPF to back flush ash which is a sort of like a hardened coal type of deposit so that is the machine there it's all set up in one of my other vans here now and it's ready ready to go on the road got another lad here working for me at the moment called John um, he was doing his own sort of stuff and he came along with me learning how to do stuff um, and I thought why not just bring him along jump into one of my vans and we'll work together now that's that's all been done it's ready to be fitted back to the to the vehicle that I came from so we're just about done on that right that's it we're all done on that one that's the machine I'll put a link in the video description where I got this from um, sometime in the future if I can get the right power supply in the van I might upgrade it to the one that has a printout um, it's fine I, I didn't see an issue with having the printout really I thought what do I need that for but now I see when people are dropping them to me uh, you want to sort of give them a printout with it but if I'm doing it myself I'm removing it from the car putting it back on we can read that via the live data on the diagnostic machine but in scenarios like this where I'm just getting I haven't seen the vehicle we've just got a DPF here it's nice to show someone uh, that it has been cleaned because as well what you can do is you get someone who if someone hasn't diagnosed this vehicle probably that this has came from and they fit it back onto it you will again get a blocked EPF and then you'd probably have them come back to me saying no you haven't cleaned it properly um, when that's not the case it's just that they haven't diagnosed the fault around why the DPF blocked and then they fit this back on and it will block again if if the vehicle has an underlying issue so you just make sure and you're aware of that and uh, see you on the next video Again